Hi, this is Dr. Jenny and today we're going to look at XML or Extensible Markup Language. XML is our first step in understanding a little more about XBRL, but first we need to add the Developer tab. To do that, you go to File, then you're going to go down to past the uh, account here, going to go to Options. In your Options area, it'll it'll come up, and what you want to pick is your uh, custom customized ribbon, and then you're just going to check the box where it says Developer that's going to actually add a new tab on our ribbon. Now when we go into this ribbon and we see the developer tab and this is uh, Excel 2013 that we're using here you'll notice that we have a lot more than XML. We have our Visual Basic, we see the macros in here, uh, we can insert forms but we're going to be working with XML. Once you've added the developer tab now I want you to download the files from D2L and what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, rename the file and click the XML map. In step one, we're going to actually save this. And as you can see, I've already done this. But I do want to show you that you can save as, um, here it shows Excel workbook, but I want to drop down and show you that you can save a file as XML data. So we're going to go ahead and just ch save this as a Excel workbook like the example says. And then um, what it tells you is that you go to the Developer tab. You're going to click in the we're XML area here. We're going to click Source. And we, if you scroll down here a little bit, you'll see that we have XML, XML map. And we can click that. And essentially we're going to do some mapping here. Uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about the two terms you should remember when you're working with XML data. Uh, let's talk first about schema. A schema is just a rules that the XML file is going to uh, follow to list all the fields in the XML document so that we know the type of data it should contain. Basically a schema is just used to validate XML data and once a schema is attached to a workbook it's called a map. So you see where they get the term XML map. So that's steps one and two. In step three, notice the XSD file. In step three, we're just clicking on the XML map, bringing this up, and then we're going to click Add, and we're looking for this file. You'll notice it says X. SD because that's the file that contains a schema. Any of these that we see with XSD can contain a schema. We're going to choose this one and then we click open and now you'll notice that this is listed right here in our um, XML map and now we just say OK. Now we go to step four. In step four, we're going to drag some of these elements over onto our document. So we'll start with branch, uh, first name, last name. Uh, we can put in the sales here. And we can put in the E number. And you'll notice that we have from A1 to E2 we see blue so this is actually part of our table because it's actually uh, letting Excel know that we've mapped these and these are now fields. In step 6 we're going to remove one of the elements. In step 5 and 6 we're going to actually remove the, this E number field from here so I'm going to go to my XML source, right click that and say remove element. And then I'm going to go up here to my table in the corner and I will highlight this and then I just basically drag it like that and what you see now is that I have removed that element. So I right clicked on the source, removed the element and then just modified this table by grabbing this little arrow thing and, and uh, removing it.
In step 7 and 8, we're going to map the properties and validate. So first you have to make sure that you click in here. If you'll notice up here in the map property box, it's grayed out unless we're in the table. So we'd, we're going to uh, be in the table, click on map properties, and this brings up our XML map. And we want to validate the data against the schema. And we also want to um, overwrite existing data with new data. I mean, it's sometimes, or we may even want to append. We can do a pin. I can either one. I'm just going to do a pin. It really won't matter because, you know, we we don't have any data in there yet. So I'm going to, uh, and if you'll notice, this is called uh, sales rep map. Uh, so we've we've got a name in there. We're going to go ahead then and click OK. Now that we've got our uh, schema and our map set up, now we can actually start importing data. So first I'm going to click on my A1 here, right on the very top left corner of my schema map. And then I'm going to go over here in the XML category and click on the import XML data. And I happen to have the file in here. This could, if you notice, this is, shows XML documents. So this could be uh, data that I have pulled from another source even. And that's the beauty of uh, all this is being able to, you know, work with different sources. I'm going to click Import. And if you'll notice, it's just as quick as that. It brought in the data from that other file. So basically, this could have been a an an exported file from some accounting software we had and then we're pulling it in here because we want to do uh, some other types of analysis and that's all there is to it. Just to demonstrate how easy it is then to pull in data uh, from another uh, XML file, let's go ahead and click right down here in A10. You'll see it's a first blank space. I'm going to click my import again and I'm going to pull in my N5 uh, again. I, it's just another file and I'm importing it in. And what you'll notice now is that I have pulled in and because I used a pen it didn't do an overwrite and so I have all of this information here. Now this is a regular table so uh, you know we can uh, change the format of our uh, cells so that we can have it uh, look more like numbers you know like if we wanted it to be um, maybe numbers uh, with no um, decimals. I don't know. I may have made more decimals there. I did. So let me fix that. We don't want any of that. We just wanted commas. But anyway, I've got this. I can now uh, use this just like a regular uh, spreadsheet and put in a total and, and however you want it. You can change this format so that it's you know not blue and white. It can be another color to match whatever you're doing. But essentially what we've done is that we've imported data from two different files to match up with these field names. Remember we how we set that up uh, earlier. Uh, so it, it, this is a really good tool to allow disparate systems to talk to each other. That concludes our tutorial. Now if I were to quiz you on these different elements, would you be able to identify and know their importance? Thanks for stopping by.